some of the things which I have, I want to share with you as a part of the lecture or presentation today in this afternoon. One, I thank Mythic Society and the IGNCA for organizing this seminar, this international seminar on Anand Kumar Swami and people, scholars from Baroda, from Sri Lanka, and from even from U US, they are all there. I was introduced to Anand Kumar Swami like many Kannada speaking people and many Kannada book lovers through Dr. S. L. Bhairappa. He is an Indian author who writes in Kannada language. So he has written his novel called Dharmashri. So incidentally, madam, in that novel, one of the heroine of the novel, Karuna Ratne, she is from Sri Lanka. And Sadashiva, Professor Rao, so he, is, he marries her as a second marriage because they both were scholars interested in the field of art, history and all that. Perhaps they meet in Ajanta. Perhaps they meet in Ajanta while they, have, they are going for the field work. In a way, my topic for the afternoon is marriage. But not the mortal marriage. Laukika Madhuve Allah. Not the mortal marriage. But the marriage which takes place between sky and earth, between the matter and the spirit, between the intellect and the valor, between the Brahma and the Kshatra. This is the topic upon which this uh, great work by Dr. Anand Kumar Swami has been written. I will come to that topic later. Anyway, I have to speak. But when I read Dr. Bhairappa's book, in that, one, he has dedicated the book to Dr. Anand Kumar Swami, that novel. Second one, in that novel also, the characters, they talk about some great names, including Kumar Swami and Sister Nivedita. That means, many of the young people in our generation, maybe later also, when sitting in a small town like Hassan, Hasana, reading from a circulating library in those 1980s, I was thrilled. Who is this Kumar Swami? Because Sister Nivedita I was knowing a little bit after reading about Swami Vivekananda. That means he has used knowledge, he has used a novel, which is an art form, pure art form, to introduce about a great art philosopher, Anand Kumar Swami. In that way, I started my journey, whatever was available to me in Hassan city, in the, in the government library, I used to go and uh, uh, read those books. I was not understanding anything. Today also I am not understanding much, to be very sincere. Then uh, I got to know that this is one of his very important books, The Dance of Shiva, because of this presentation I am doing mainly for the young uh, people in the hall. Then I purchased this book in the year 1995. I was 20 years old at that time. I came to Vedanta Book House one of the most uh, important bookshops in Bangalore, from Hassan. I was not having money to buy the ticket. Somehow I arranged the money. And I came, had one idli, coffee, and I purchased the book, and again I went back. Means the spirit, the, the passion created by Bhairappa brought me to Vedanta Bookhouse to purchase this book. Till today, this book is with me. There are other versions available, but this book, wherever I go, I carry with me as a treasure. Because this has given me so many things about art, about philosophy, about my country, my nation, my culture, our culture. In this one important aspect he mentions, I think in this article called uh, What in the India Has Contributed, the first article, in that he says that philosophy is the key to the map of the world. That is one of the major statements made by Kumar Swami. If today, if people have, people may have different opinions, there are many great scholars here, that if we have defigured, though not destroyed, anything in the last 200 years, it is not Samskrita, it is not Kavya, it is not Shilpa, but according to me it is philosophy, it is our darshana. Because the people who know it, they don't know how to communicate, People there who want to know, they don't know how to seek it. But most of our treasure, whether in art or, or in uh, architecture, everything is has its umbilical card, the mother root, the matru, the mula beru in philosophy. 
Therefore, I have taught in universities or colleges for 12 years, 13 years, and our professor, he is there from Baroda. So most of the times we go to the European institutions, Edward Bullough or many others, I.A. Richards or any, any other uh, great uh, institutions from the European or the American continent. There is no, nothing wrong in that, but we don't have access to this literature. I think Nagarajji, in his uh, opening remarks, he, he asked, he raised, a very he raised an important question that why Kumaraswamy now? What is the relevance now? Because to go back to our philosophy. We are all talking about our art, our dar dharma, our dharma shastra, our Ramayana, Mahabharata. That's all fine. That is very much required. But what is the purpose of Vyasa or purpose of uh, Valmiki or purpose of the great seers? Not only to tell very interesting stories. Of course, they are all with human passion, everything. But there is some thought behind it, some moral principle behind it, some civilizational values behind it. Who has to teach us? Again, our own teachers, our own professors, our own media. But you, we know the status of our media in the modern context. Therefore, spiritual and uh, the, this uh, Anandu Kumar Swami seminar is important in a way that it takes us to philosophy class, it, fed, it takes us to philosophy department through art department, through architecture department, through painting, through metaphors, through images, Rupaka, figure of speech and figure of thought, that is one of his uh, book. So he takes us to, to those realms of forgotten parts of our consciousness, not only for India, even for the West, which is uh, ruled by the harsh realities of modernity, the cruelties of the modernity, namely competition, jealousy, destruction of earth, destruction of water resources, and disrespecting the guild, disrespecting the local artistic communities. These are all philosophical questions for Ananda Kumar Swami as he grew. First he started as a geologist, later attracted towards art and artifacts, so he became more like art historian in the normal sense of the term. Means he used to talk about Mauryan art, Gupta art, Shunga art in his introduction to Indian art. But later he evolved himself. There is a Vikasa in him as an author or as a thinker. Later he started giving more elaborate picture about art, architecture from philosophical background. This is my topic now. Where did he got the bedrock philosophy or the very substantial, uh, what we can call pointers for his developing his second phase of thought? Because my topic is about, not about first part of his talk or his uh, uh, research or his contribution. Second part of Ananda Kumar Swami becomes more and more pedantic, more and more scholarly, more and more garlanded with footnotes and endnotes, what not. Why? Is he exhibiting his scholarship? Is he, is he an exhibitionist of his knowledge or wisdom? Certainly not. He is telling etad desha prasutasya, like in Manusmuti it comes, people of the world, please come here. So much of knowledge lore has been created by all the people before the advent of modernity before the birth of 14th century, birth of the modern Europe or the so-called Mughal India, lot of things have happened in China to Canada. Therefore, when he talks about art, there is no distinction in his thinking that this is the classical period, this is the modern period. Somehow, he will not dwell much into the modern period because he has his own philosophical disagreements with the modernity. That's a different topic which is very uh, deeply discussed in his book, What is Civilization? For him, civilization, to quote Ar uh, Thomas Aquinas, uh, is the city of God. What we say, Deva Loka. So the city of God should be brought back here. Therefore, he, call, he calls that script in which 
the modern the ancient civilization is scripted as devanagari now you can appreciate his thought in which you will construct devanagara the script is called devanagari for him it is not some the script in which sanskrit or hindi is written that is there at one level physical level but at the metaphysical level so he is talking about in which script you have to construct the modern civilization in the script of devanagari you have to construct this civilization then only it will become a place worth for everybody to live now in this background when he was searching for something he got lot of good inputs from brahmanas morning dr ganesh ji was mentioning about brahmana literature used by anand kumar swami extensively he has used the original chatrapata brahmana and other brahmana literature and also the translation of egling again it is published from ignca egling uh, chatrapata brahmana uh, has been uh, translated uh, it, it was translated it was again brought in, in the new edition by ignca that brahmana literature is there because at that time perhaps in india also our scholars they were taking more time in talking about or giving importance to the vedic literature namely rigveda and other three vedas and the upanishads perhaps not that much importance was given if i am wrong please forgive me and guide me not to the brahmana literature there were scholars but not much he got his idea or his he is not he didn't get his ideas because as he is not telling no idea belongs to me everything is coming from the tradition ella nu hindu hindinda bartta irudu ella purvikarinda bartta irudu like that he is telling everything is coming from the ancestors but this was there in the vedic literature hidden somewhere in the brahmana literature brahmana part of it he found it but before he found it he had one of his mentors in europe a french philosopher his name is rene gon normally when we indians gather and we talk or similarly europeans when they gather and talk they may forget they may forget the scholars are the great souls of the other part of the world which is not the nature of kumar swami's thought so this or kumar swami's line of thinking rene gon this is the book rene gon this is not a big book it is just uh, 84 pages book it's a booklet this is the name of this book is spiritual authority and temporal power this was published in 1939 Anand Kumar Swami it is a french book Ramas Anand Kumar Swami played an important role in getting it into english but according to my studies he was not though he he appreciated and he agreed on the line of argument of renegon i will come to that what is renegon's uh, line of argument in relation with this topic but he developed it based on lot of examples footnotes cross references from vedic literature so that is this book spiritual authority and temporal power in the indian theory of government this is anand kumar swami's work this is renegon's work both the books are there we may be deceived at the outset by seeing this this is just less than 100 pages book but to read this it takes years or months at least because this is loaded with so many documents which was created by the ancients to use uh, uh, kumar swami's phraseology or shabdavali is ancients not eastern not western not occidental not oriental people who are wise they have created so much of things they have thought about the relationship this entire quest of both renegon and anand kumar swami is about relationship when we talk about relationship in the modern world many young boys and girls are here we think about live in relationship we think about gay relationship we think about lesbian relationship we think about normal marriage which is which is between a man and a woman considering all these things anand kumar swami is talking and thinking about or he is giving a thought about the relationship between two entities which will form an ideal rajya an ideal state which is the foundation for politics or the result of politics so what is the on what basis a rajya a state has to be built 
a prabhutva has to be built this is the question he is not talking about whether autocracy is good democracy is good communism is good socialism is a place no he is not talking about forms of government he is talking about the government this is very important he is not talking about the different types of government what you study in film, in sociology or in uh, political science classes he is not talking about that he is not even talking about the old janapadas which existed before the maurya 16 uh, janapadas in magadha kashi kosal etc not that it existed in different or not about the tribal societies which exist existed and exist now also in different parts of the world but end of the day you call whatever either you have an arranged marriage or a love marriage at the end of the day once the marriage is done everyone has gone back the bride and bridegroom they have to lead the life no that is marriage life married life he is talking about that kind of government okay after lot of deliberations and discussions you come to an agreement and you establish a certain type of government in society or in any part of the world how that government should be there a sarkara hengirbeku a prabhutva hengirbeku wo vyavastha kaisa hona chahiye he is talking about that therefore at, as dr ganesh ji mentioned in the morning he is an idealist we don't know whether such kind of idealist government in the words of renegon or in the words of anand kumar swami existed even in india here professor kannan is there and tomorrow he is going to deliver the samaropa bhashana summary address so i am also eagerly waiting waiting to know that whether such a system existed during even the veda times that idea is there idea is very much there but can we very comfortably say that that kind of government also existed for hundreds of years or centuries if you ask professor k s narayanacharya he says yes, yes it existed he gives examples from ramayana mahabharata and even from the old vedic literature also but anyway that is left to the scholars but here in this book anand kumar swami is trying to talk about the marriage the marriage between two concepts and also they are not only concepts they are realities also it's a reality because he he starts his uh, book from the concept of concepts uh, which are available in vedas in the rigveda and other vedas for example in his book spiritual authority and temporal power he says i am quoting we must premise that mitra varunav and likewise indra agni or indra brihaspati or synergizes or progenitive pairs mithunani mitra agni and brihaspati being on one hand the divine archetypes of the sacerdotium or spiritual authority brahma and varuna and indra those of the regnam kshatra he is taking two sets of gods mitra agni and brihaspati on one side that means not all the three it may be either mitra or agni or brihaspati in that in that order and in another side varuna or the indra the marriage between agni and indra or marriage between other two deities from two, two parts he is call, calling as the mithuna of brahma and kshatra those two things that means what we understand from this is when we are talking about vedic gods reading max muller or other european writers till wendy doniger and others we will get a very very clumsy idea about vedic gods that even one person calls vedic vedas rigveda as the factory of gods that is not correct because there is a there is an entire system behind it there is an entire political thought social thought adhyatmic thought and different other thoughts are present in the vedic literature before him before anand kumar swami wrote it there is another good book about hindu polity by kashi prasad jaiswal kp jaiswal and many other people have also written but they have started with vedic uh, quotations but please note this point this is one of the important points of my presentation if i can call it as presentation that they are talking as a starting point from vedas but suddenly they will move to the magadhas janapadas navanandas to the mauryas to shungas and different other so called dynasties after the alexander's time but here he is talking he is stopping at the vedas only this is the beauty of anand kumar swami in this entire book he will never quote anything in 
modern india according to him the modern india starts with chandragupta maurya chanakya ancient india or whatever we are calling the classical period arsi mujumdar and others they will call guptas and the mauryas as the classical up to harsha of kanauj no no he is not agreeing with that he is not telling it but we can decipher from his writing he he is getting enough material from upanishads from the brahmana literature and parallelly from greek and other christian sources and he is building his entire theory normally when we when when i when i talk with the marxist scholars either from history department or sociology or any other department they have an aropa on us whom we call as nationalist people that you don't have a theory so that means those marxist people they have not read a great theoretician like anand kumar swami he has given a complete theory of understanding about state about the government both about power and authority based on the uh, perennial philosophy that means this philosophy is eternal this is not related to one time this is not time bound somebody asked bernard shaw he was writing lot of uh, plays about social problems like in our literature also we have lot of uh, artists who write about contemporary subjects even there are many arts artists and art students they are more in, inclined towards modern subjects modern problems of modern society some some new journalist or some person he people they asked uh, bernard shaw sir one question is there whatever the social problems you are addressing through your artistic work tomorrow if that problem ceases to exist the problem is gone is solved in one way or the other disappeared from the society what happens to your work of art this question was asked to me by uh, told to me by this insight was given to to me by one english professor from hasan hasan his name is professor manwacha he gave me this what happens to that your art work of art which is based on social theory or social problem which has got a uh, some kind of base in the modern society if the problem disappears what happens to your work of art that you can ask to ajanta art you can ask to shunga art or to the egyptian art they are still there eternally standing there waiting for us to go and appreciate that he is calling as perennial that which stands successfully against the test of time that he is calling as here to draw the attention of the audience there is a difference between there is a there is a uh, there is a letter correspondence between alda saxley great uh, thinker of 20th century and anand kumar swami it is there in the uh, letters of anand kumar swami volume published from ignca there alda saxley tells him writes to kumar swami that we both are traveling on the same path i am not uh, paraphrasing just i am summarizing uh, alda saxley's letter we both are traveling the same because we both are talking about per- perennial uh, philosophies or traditional philosophies then anand kumar swami corrects him by writing a another letter to him alda saxley no we both are traveling but there is a difference for me tradition is when i call somebody as a traditionalist there should not be any choice this is anand kumar swami's position if you are a traditionalist if i say i am traditionalist in the indian context i am accepting whatever comes from my sampradaya there is no choice here i will i will take two three items i will i will delete two three i will reject or i will say something different to it in that sense i am traditionalist you are not in this way he has answered to aldus huxley so it is very difficult to digest writers like anand kumar swami because he is talking about tradition not in the sense of vedic tradition jain tradition buddhist tradition christian tradition he is not talking about for him exists only two entities one is tradition another is modernity that is his position because jeevandal bere bere apradhagalan madidini adralli idu ond apradha anand kumar swami on pustaka berdidini i have written a book about anand kumar swami when i was going through this 
I got this idea. He is a traditionalist in the sense that he accepts wisdom which is coming to him down the centuries, maybe from 10,000 years, maybe 10, uh, 20,000 years, whatever. In that, he is not making any differentiation between so-called tribal, modern, ethnic, all that. He has written an article called Primitive Art. Why primitive art is equal to any kind of art that he says. In that he says that when you, when you draw a circle, either a small circle or a big circle, end of the day it is decided by the circumference. Only there is a difference in the circumference. But the center is the same and the nature of the circle is the same. Only based on the circumference, we cannot say that circle which has more bigger circumference is a, has a greater artistic value or philosophical value, that he is not agreeing. Why I am connecting these points is that he is talking about Mitra Varuna or Indra Agni, Indra Agni or Indra Bruhaspati as one couple, as one married couple. That is the concept. Only at the concept level we have to take. That is the, like as I told, as the marriage between the spiritual authority and Regnam. That is about uh, Brahma and Kshatra. This is the one point he gives. Then he supports it in the following pages. As I told you, this book has got only this uh, published from uh, Munshira Manohar Lal, 87 uh, pages book. Only 87 pages. But it has the number of footnotes given by Anand Kumar Swami are more than 75. For 87 pages book, he has given 75 pages. So, that shows how deeply he has invested his time and mind in writing books, all the books, but especially the last two, three books, namely Time and Eternity and Spiritual Authority and Temporal Power in the Indian Theory of Government. Therefore, forget about uh, talking about Anand Kumar Swami or translating, as uh, morning that Ganesh has told, Ganesh has told that, even reading becomes a challenge. So, that is because maybe so many ideas or whatever he has read, he could collect them, recollect them so easily and he has arranged perhaps his library in such a way, whatever his personal library in such a way, that everything is very handy to him. Everything comes to, that everything is in the fingertips to him. So everything he is taking and he is arranging them in such a way. It is similarly, if I quote the example, like how after preparing the dish, we will dress, there is a dressing, dressing the table and dressing and presenting the food or for the gods we, we made, make the garland and we decorate in the temples like that for him such kind of writings are an alankara in the real sense embellishment from inside not from outside therefore all these footnotes corollaries they are not coming like in our today's PhD or MPhil dissertations. They are not coming from outside. When we read that, they are so easily connected. Only we will be baffled that how could he, how could so much of things can rush to him. Like Professor Vidyalankara S.K. Ramachandra Rao, one of the great personalities India has produced in the last century. He is from Karnataka, from Bangalore he was there. He says that, I will read in Kannada, then I will translate to English. Vedada Sandeshavan Avaro, Yadayala Dali Nambi Kondante, Yava Hindu Nambi Kodalila, Matu Bharata the Kalayagali, Dharma Vagali, Tana Guttan Avarigi Bitu Kotante, Bere Yarigu Bitu Kodalila, Prachina Bharati, Samskuti Gay, Avru Maru Hogi Dudo, other other Shavan no, Marilisalindo, Avru Tapasu Maditro. Means the ancient Indian art, ancient Dharma has not. Uh, given out its truth or secret to others as it has given to Anand Kumar Swami. Says 
S. K. Ramachandra Rao. It is it is really when we when we read his writings, especially the additional notes what he gives in support of his, then we will uh, we will be astonished to know that how can he collect and arrange so much of data with so much of logical rigor there is no emotional element in it it is not emotive it may it may arouse emotion in your mind about your culture that is not the thing because he was trained as a geologist he was an msc so that scientific uh, course or the education he has mentioned about himself has come very handy to him very useful to him in writing his papers and books means whatever the uh, uh, science background he had it it was very useful for him to write about arts and art subjects and more precisely about philosophy in his time while talking about philosophy there was a kind of a compartmentalization that exists till today also because his time was very challenging one compared to today's times no internet no google now if i want within one uh, one year one hour or two hour when the internet speed is more in the midnight time or after after the dinner i can sit and open ignc a pdf section i can get most of his works into my computer whether i understand it or not that's a different thing but i can just collect it in within no time but to collect that much of material like many other scholars during his time he has taken very pain taking research secondly anand kumar swami was not an armchair philosopher that came in the morning also because when he is writing about a government how the government should be in that what is the position of a brahmana and kshatriya or brahma and kshatra when he is talking about it he is not uh, talking in vacuum british empire it existed here it was there from malaysia to canada or something like that and out and out he was for indian freedom struggle he was supporting it therefore he was not given any position or any job in india bhu was there he was not even given a job in even in bhu he has to go to boston though he was born to british parents and sinhalese parents he didn't get any job either in sri lanka or india or forget about britain i don't know i have one research thing to submit nivedane in kannada we say when i was translating uh, veer savarkar's uh, uh, dhananjay kir's biography on veer savarkar name of the book is veer savarkar it is 722 pages here there is one mention about one kumar swami it is c o o kumar swami the same spelling as this kumar swami what is the context they are having a secret society in london and uh, for the freedom of the for the complete uh, freedom of india for the purna swarajya of india uh, uh, savarkar proposes and c o o m a r swami second seat writes dhananjay kir and he gives no hints i asked his son dhananjay kir son he lives in uh, ratnagiri he is not i don't know anything but uh, that is a if if some british intelligence records were there british police or cids behind him because he was a staunch nationalist his nationalism is not based on politics it was not like tilak's kind or of gandhi's kind it was a kind of artistic art based nationalism because he believed again coming to politics only artists can rule the world only artist can guide the society that is his uh, very one of his very basic sutra basic statement of anand kumar swami essays in national idealism art, art and swadeshi these two books also talks about not only about art and swadeshi it also peripherally touches about the colonial expansion of the british not only from an artistic point of view even from the administrative point of view he touches those things therefore keeping this mind that in 1942 when the when he wrote this book and published this book and before that he translated renegon's book into english he was he must be under the radar of the empire british raj though he was in 
America. Because America and uh, Britain, politically, they, they belong to the same uh, Axis group, to the French group. So he, in this uh, book, he also continues based on his, uh, using his footnotes that the same Indra and, uh, Indra and uh, Agni concept he brings to the Mahabharata times and he relates with, with Krishna Arjuna. So Arjuna is Indra and uh, here he says that now bearing in mind that Arjuna is Indra or what amounts to the same thing Indra's son in Mahabharata that Krishna and Arjuna like Indragni and uh, like uh, Matali and Indra share a common car and that where these are Krishna the lord of yoga and Arjuna the archer there are fortune, victory, security of being and governmental signs. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Tatra Partho Dhanurdharaha So we, we, we know that uh, sloka means wherever Krishna and Arjuna are there as a Yamada or as a Yugma or as couple or one set of people having two distinct qualities which are supplementing each other, which are in samarasya, harmony with each other, definitely you will get three kinds of benefits, outcome. What is the outcome according to uh, Mahabharata? One is that you will get fortune, you will get victory, security of being and governmental science. That is the real political science. Governmental science is that where Krishna Arjuna exist together. Means we do Krishna Pasana. Krishna Bhakti is there. Rama Bhakti is there. But he is telling this Krishna Arjuna concept or Indra Matali concept or Indra Agni concept is together. That means one who drives the chariot, whatever may be the chariot, it may be the government, it may be the house, it may be an office and the person who gives wisdom to run that structure, both should be in harmony. Now, comes the next question, what do you mean by harmony? Manenali hinti jasti power rato, gandan jasti power rato. Whether the uh, women will have more power in the family life or the man? Answer is very clear. I cannot tell that. So, our starting point where he says that mixta persona, he calls this as mixta persona. Earlier there were two personalities. In our vivaha also, they said that earlier they were two. Now, they become one couple. But this is not a contract. Like in the European uh, context of government and of marriage, by Rousseau and other three, three contract philosophers of 19th century, this is not a contract for us. It's not a oppanda, vivaha oppanda. It's not a treaty between two families. It, it will happen in India also between in Bollywood and in big, big uh, business uh, high houses, tycoons, they will have that. I'm talking about regular India, not irregular. There, marriage, we say that it is forever. Married means once forever. That concept, he talks in the in, in Dance of Shiva, in the chapter, the status of Indian woman, each is both. That is the word told by Anand Kumar, each is both. That means you cannot separate man and woman, you cannot separate Shiva and Parvati. In this context of my presentation, you cannot separate Krishna and Arjuna or Indra and Agni. Why I am stressing this point, go to this Vidhan Soda, which is from here, half a kilometer. Where is Agni? Where is Krishna? Where is Indra? Where is Hendati? or where is Ganda. That means there is no, I am not joking, just I gave the example, in today's political system, I am not talking about Indian political system or European or American or uh, North Korea. I am not talking about any particular set of government. Where are the people who can give direction to the masters, who are masters in the state of art, of running the government? They will have some advisory body which is nonsense. All are there for Padma Shri, Padma Bhushana, Padma Bhushana. But they are just there, here and there, scattered. Some writers, some scholars, some scientists or engineers. But people who are of the worthy metal, 
For example, come to the times of Chandragupta Maurya, there is one Chanakya. Come to the times of uh, Hakkabukka, Harihara, there is one Vidyaranya. Come to the times of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, there is Samartha Ramdasa. Right? There is one spiritual power. Many, many people, they got inspiration from one Vivekananda, one Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, even political administrators. There is no backing of wisdom for running the chariot called government. That is the agony, that is the anger in Ananda Kumar Swami. This is a sattvika anger of a Rushi or a Rushi Sadrusha Vakti personality. That means, therefore, he is not writing this book in silos, in an AC conditioned room, air conditioned room. He is seeing everything. He is seeing America. 1942 means already they are in the middle of the Second World War. So he is seeing where is only one, maybe Truman is there or maybe one Henry Kissinger is there who is giving some diplomatic uh, advices to the then government but he is not like one Chanakya or like one, one Krishna. In this way, the question which was raised by in the, in the beginning of the Second World War by his mentor, René Gon, in the in the French book, in the French language book that is uh, spiritual authority and temporal power in the book, I, I didn't find the exact uh, line, it is here that we may not, he says in this book Renegon says, we may not find the perfect uh, uh, concept forget about the harmony, first of all perfect picture or perfect concept of a Brahmana or a Brahma or a wise person's picture, image we will not get in the entire European history that means Europe in Itihas Adali Brahman Aru Illa. Europe ke Itihas me Brahman nahi hai. Brahman means philosophically I am talking, not like on caste. There was one Plato, maybe, but he was not Christian. He was a Greek. There must be somebody during the Roman Empire. But after the Orthodox Church, Greek Church, and later the Catholic Church, later the great revolutionary Protestant Church, there were no Brihaspatis. There were no Agnis, there were no Krishnas to guide one Matali or one Indra or one Arjuna or one ruler, one political ruler. Therefore, so much of chaos, so much of turbulence, so much of bloodshed is a part and parcel of European history. Either it is Jihad, or it is holy war, everywhere you can see there is no century in European history in the last 2000 years where there is no war between two territories or two kingdoms or two states because they have the political ambitions, they have the Kshatriyas, they have the people who have got lot of, little bit taking my lecture further, they, they are all having Rajasa Subhava. They are all Rajasa. But there is no Sattva or Sattvika Shakti which can, Sattvika power, authority which can guide them. This is the point he is telling. This was the pain. This was the question raised but unanswered or answered only halfway through by Rene Gaon. Ananda Kumar Swami has a continuity of the book of Rene Gaon he continues this and he writes, he, he, he takes pain to go to our Vedic literature. But the sad part is that today also in our political science department or in our ancient history departments, as I know, people are not referring this book. In Kannada language, our Ganesh ji has written, actually has given a lecture in Gokhale Institute of Public Affairs about our Kshatra Parampara. Later it is published as Bharatiya Chhatra Parampara. Now it is available in English also. In that also, not exactly, but this, that book also goes in the same line. That between Kshatra and Brahma, there should be a harmony. This is not like a very uh, alankarika thing. Just This is not telling just for the sake of telling, always there should be wise people and brave people together. No, no. This is how politics was. And politics has to be 
is the theory of Ananda Kumar Swami. Therefore, my topic is what is the theory of Ananda Kumar Swami based on this? Whether you have democracy, autocracy, whatever types of uh, types of government, but there is no wise. When Mao Tse Tung killed so many people, or Stalin or Lenin they killed so many people, or Hitler they killed so many people, there were no rushis. There were no people guiding them. That is the thing happened in, 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 in the modern uh, context. Or take the example of Cambodia, Pol Pot. He, bones and bones, if the archaeologists, if they go to Cambodia for any excavation, other than getting any artifacts or temples or pillars, inscriptions, rather they will get human skulls and bones. I have been there to Cambodia. There are a lot of pictures available. The deeds of Pol Pot. And tomorrow we don't know what Kim has done in North Korea. Means we, we should read Ananda Kumar Swami not as some paleontology subject, some archaic subject who is there for some great scholars sitting somewhere in Mars or maybe in Moon. No, it is for how to run a good life, how to have a good governance, how to have a good government. For that, is there any wisdom which we can draw from our ancestors and from our ancient literature? To answer that, this book is a very good opening. So, he says that Mitra, Mitra is the council or, and Varuna the power. Mitra the Brahma and Varuna the Kshatra. Mitra the knower and Varuna the executive. Mitra the knower, he has the knowledge of it. And uh, Varuna, he is the executor. He is the Kartru. Whereas the Mitra is the knower. This concept when he is telling, we, you must also appreciate these Vedic gods concept, they are not again watertight compartments. Indra can come separately, Agni can come separately or Varuna can come separately, but Indra Agni can be as a combined thing also. This is there in the Vedas. Otherwise what happens, as many historians have written, Varuna is not a Hindu god, is not a Vedic god, he is coming from somewhere from Persia or from that side from today's Afghanistan or from Hindu Kush side because in all of his sculptures there is a shoes, boots. That boots is absent in rest of all uh, Hindu gods uh, sculptures. So these kinds of, I don't know how to call because there are people who are better knowledge about art and architecture. I'm not going to talk about it but I can certainly say this is not the way how to read our gods. That much I can say. Because Varuna may have boots or may not have boots. Boots means, is it is should be shown or can it be hidden? We don't know. So, this uh, concept, uh, what I have told, this concept he develops in, in, the, in, the, in the coming pages and he brings it into a more popular term. He calls the Agni as the Purohita. Just for our understanding, it is there in Kumaraswami, he is the Purohita and the king is the one who leads. So that means the king, the Raja or Maharaja should have Purohita. Everyone in the hall may wonder what is there, what Mr. Harisha is telling, everything we know. In all the kings they had Purohitas to fix the Jataka or for the good Shubhapala or for all the naming ceremony of the child. Mahurta. It is there for Lagna, good Lagna, auspicious dates, Lagna. No, no, no. This is the point now. I don't know how the audience will take this. Who is stronger now? King is stronger or Purohita is stronger? This is very difficult to ask this question in secular India. Brahmana or Brahma is more Brahma should lead Kshatra or Kshatra should control Brahma. Should spiritual authority guide temporal power? This is the topic. Or temporal power will tell Brahma what it should do and what should it should not do. If that happens, that is communism. You should write like this, you have to do painting like this, you have to do sculpture like this, then that is, read George Orwell's 1984. We'll come to know a lot of things. Or Solzhenitsyn's book, A Day in the Life of Ivan Illich. We'll come to know what has happened to artists and uh, free thinkers in that part of the world. Therefore, here he is telling the choice is mutual, means who should be the Purohita, who should be the king, there is a choice. That means he is telling this Varuna 
आश्रम पद्धति इज वेरी फ्लेक्सीबल टुमारो यू आर किंग एंड दैट पर्सन इज पुरोहित दैट इज फाइन बट वंस इट इज एक्सेप्टेड इन दैट किंगडम और इन दैट टाइम पीरियड देन देर आर ड्यूटीज फॉर ए पुरोहिता देर आर लक्षण फॉर ए पुरोहिता फॉर अ ब्राह्मा एंड देर आर लक्षण कैरेक्टर्स फॉर ए छात्र फॉर पीपल हु आर हैविंग वैलर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव फॉर एग्जीक्यूशन एग्जीक्यूटर्स बोथ आर देर हियर ही सेज दैट इफ पुरोहिता लीड्स द गवर्नमेंट दैट मीन्स ही इज द नोयर द नोयर विल गाइड द गवर्नमेंट एंड द एग्जीक्यूटर डूअर कर्तृ ही विल डू इट देन इट इज ए हैप्पी मैरेज इन दैट कंटेक्स्ट ही इज ब्रिंगिंग द वर्ल्ड मैरेज दैट मीन्स एन एडवाइजर or a wise person brahma is telling this is the way this is the way chandragupta you do like this arjuna you do like this or dharmaraja you do like this don't do that this is wrong this is right this is not niti this is not niti that means this is not like saying okay you can you can do this like once uh, the, this yudhishthira was not getting uh, this uh, uh, dhritarashtra was not getting sleep then he will call this uh, vidura in the night and there will be one uh, sanatsu jatiya and after that again yudhishthira will do all nonsense things and people will go for war it is not like that like sometimes you will have cultural programs to fit the timetable right some dance program some musical is not like that is not a filler please understand the role of brahma is very serious in politics we after getting 78 years of independence are we respecting brahma are we respecting wisdom are we respecting the no knowledgeable people there may be knowledge commissions and uh, what not i'm not going to the governmental structures but real knowledgeable people are the respected not only of today please don't mistake anand kumar swami he is not talking about the contemporary history at all for him contemporary starts from 10000 years or 5000 years very long background is there so all that wisdom maybe from eckhart maybe from thomas aquinas maybe from plato maybe maybe from shukraniti everything what is its place in the society in the government the way in which we are functioning the government becomes autocratic then the king will become monarch he will become a tyrant onu dushtan aagtane sarvadhikari aagtane negative age because there is nobody to guide him this is the marriage so the purohita should guide the purodhatra rajasu should guide the rajasuya means he will do the rajasuya but for him to do the rajasuya there must be one person who will guide him otherwise the <coughs> horse will guide him wherever the horse takes it will go and you know that how much of things have happened in history in our ancient history what the horses have done in this context therefore when to sum up there is this entire entire essay uh, goes uh, in this uh, manner only just to give one example very very clearly anand kumar swami has no no temperament to mince his words he was known for his very straight forward words you can read uh, his comments about rice davids and uh, lady Re- rice davids uh, pali buddhist uh, dictionary so he is he tells that the agni again the purohita or brahma agni is represented by the baked agni is mature page number 20 agni is mature material of the altar when you have the yagna kunda the fire altar sacred fire altar in the fire altar agni is the baked because agni is already dagdha agni is already is burning with full flame full fledge flame is there there is nothing to hide or nothing to become more baked whereas indra by the unbaked half baked immature material some immature material you put into it again that is also baked that means purohita will burn how you do the bronze metal casting and all he will burn that metal and give it a artistic shape this is casting this work is done by the purohita then a beautiful shilpa like chandragupta or krishna devaraya or harihara or chatrapati shivaji will emerge or one louis the 14th or one rahul gandhi or one paul pot or one mussolini zulfikar ali bhutto they will emerge so this is the 
very serious note on which he has talked about politics and political thing in a purely philosophical way of understanding so yavudu bendidiyo adu beide irodanna beisatte yavudu are bendidiyo adu innond are bendirodanna beisakkaralla nanu dadda neenu dadda andre otliye kootkondre combined study yenagutte like that here the baked will make the half baked and convert it into a completely fully baked the complete will make the other part complete that is the beauty of a couple namaste